will read our text again. It is the text that was the call to worship, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sermon title this morning is Gratitude Does the Body Good. Most of you probably know by now that I love the Psalms and I love preaching the Psalms. The Psalms are an expression of God's people. Each one written by someone, most of them attributed to King David, the Psalms are one person's expressions of God, their experience with God and conclusions about God. One person's theology, which we usually just adopt, and we do so not blindly, but often because the words resonate with us, they speak to us. The day we wrote Psalms in worship, I was so very proud of you because those of you who were here and who participated were willing to express yourself. You accepted the invitation that day not to hear so much from me, but to speak for yourself in writing to God and to whomever you allowed to read your psalm. Psalms were and are written for the community. Consider sharing your psalm if you haven't already, and we will do psalm writing again, maybe during Advent. Because it is important for you to express yourself in worship. Today's psalm, Psalm 34, is a quite popular psalm, particularly in my clergy circles. We often use it as a call to worship, as we did this morning. Many of my clergy friends, and I will as well, we come to the mic, particularly when we have uh, preaching engagements, and you may have even heard me say this before, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, won't you magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. It is a great call to worship, a great invitation to not only listen to the speaker, acknowledge the goodness of God, but as our children did this morning, it's an invitation for the hearers to join in and praise the Lord. But what is that all about? Why is the psalmist of this particular psalm so excited about praising God? I'm glad you asked. If you look in your Bible, you might see a heading for this psalm. Some of the psalms have headings that the biblical writers, when they put it together, some of them have, and it may have been part of the original sometimes, maybe not. But there's a note above this psalm in most Bibles in the NRSV, it reads, the Psalm of David, when he feigned madness before Abimelech, so that he drove him out and he went away. Some biblical scholars believe the heading refers to a story in 1 Samuel 21. We'll stay with David being the psalmist and that being the situation. David then penned these words after being delivered from danger, a deliverance that David credits to God. David wrote this psalm after one event. One time God delivered him from his enemy, and that one time was so significant and so poignant so meaningful because that one time he was so desperate, 
So in need of a way out of no way. So in need of rescue. Ever been there? So in need of help. At that one time when he didn't think he'd get out alive or unscathed or unembarrassed, that one time when he knew that if God doesn't get me out of this, I'm doomed. It was such a profound and life-saving deliverance that it led him to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will always bless the Lord. God's praise will always be in my mouth. As a matter of fact, my soul will always boast about God. As the young people said, yay God, go God. It's a pretty significant statement to say that you will always praise God. Surely David knew there would be hard times, other hard times. Surely David even knew about times of war. But on this day, he's experienced such a divine deliverance, a deliverance that was so significant and so profound that he makes the boldest statement he can that no matter what happens, he will always have nothing but praise for God on his lips. That's pretty bold, David. Don't you know bad days will happen? Don't you know terrible things may come your way? Don't you know people will doubt God, David? Don't you know this will be read at times when God seems so distant and even so unreal? David's experience of God's deliverance for him was so indisputable that he stands by his bold statement that no matter what comes, he will always praise the Lord. And it was so indisputable that David also says, let the humble hear and be glad. Some translations say, let the suffering hear and rejoice. David is so sure about God that he wants those who are suffering to also be sure about God. He's so sure of God after this particular indisputable deliverance from danger by God that he wants the suffering to perk up and be glad. Not glad about what God has done for David, but glad because God is no respecter of persons. David is saying, y'all, God just helped me so much that I want you to also be glad because if God did it for me, God will help you too. Now that might sound unreliable to you, but it is the central concept to our faith tradition. We feed off of the stories of old and how God showed up and delivered the people of the Old Testament, and how Jesus helped and healed the people of the New Testament. And we are encouraged by those stories, and we're helped by those stories. David says, let the suffering hear my story, and be glad and be encouraged, because the same God that helped me is able to help you. Then in verse 3, he takes it a step further and he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. What's the invitation here? David says, magnify the Lord with me. How shall we understand this? Well, I won't say this for many parts of the biblical text, but I'll say it here. Let's take that literally. He says, magnify the Lord. And to literally magnify the Lord means to intensify what is said about God. Thereby causing God to be held in greater esteem and respect. Magnify the Lord. Highlight what God is doing in your life. Magnify the Lord. 
You know, you've had a magnifying glass. Make God's acts more visible for all to see. Starting with yourself, magnify the Lord. David invites his audience not just to hear his story, but to magnify our own stories about God. Highlight and make them visible. Those things that God is doing for you. Spend some time this week with your A to Z blessings and use it to magnify the Lord. Then in verse 4, David demonstrates. He models what he just asked us to do. Listen to more of his testimony as he magnifies the Lord. In verse 4, he says, I sought the Lord. And he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. David helps us here because some of us, if we tell the truth, are real nervous about this idea of magnifying the Lord. Sounds a bit churchy. Sounds too emotional. But David just made it real simple with his demonstration. Listen to it again. He said, I sought the Lord. The Lord answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Thanks, David. You don't need special words to magnify the Lord. You don't need all the these and the thous and even the hallelujah. Even the children gave that to us today. But, but you don't need the hallelujahs in order to magnify the Lord. David gave us a simple sentence. No flowery language. Just the fact. You might even be able to borrow David's words. David said, I sought the Lord, and he answered. Is that part of your testimony? It's certainly part of mine. I can't tell you how many times I've sought the Lord, and the Lord answered me. And if that's your testimony, go ahead and write it next to the I. I sought the Lord. Or write it next to answer. He answered me. Moving through the psalm, David now ministers to the audience, ministers to us, encouraging us to do as he has done. For after his testimony about how he sought the Lord, in verse 5, David says, look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This sentiment to look to God, to seek the Lord, reverberates throughout the biblical text. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, seek the Lord when he can still be found. Call the Lord while the Lord is yet near. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Matthew 6, after talking about worry, Jesus says, but seek ye first the kingdom and God's righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Seeking God and receiving an answer is one of the greatest experiences of my life. And I pray your life. And that might be all somebody needs to hear today. You're troubled. You're troubled with something. Something has been frustrating you and something, there's trouble around you and you've sought this and you've sought that. You've been on social media. You've watched the news. I encourage you to seek the Lord. Call upon the Lord and allow God to answer you. Seek the Lord, he says. Look to God in prayer. Look to God through meditation. Look to God by reading the scriptures. Look to God by listening to spiritual music. Listen and look to God. Listen to sermons instead of so much news and TV that disturbs our very core. I encourage you to look to God. David said, I saw the Lord and he answered me and I've said I sought the Lord and he answered me and I'm sure there's at least one more witness here who will also say I too sought the Lord and the Lord answered me 
It's among the greatest experience of life to seek God and find God. And once that happens, you can explain everything that happens in this world. But one thing you know for sure, you have a blessed assurance that God is. David reinforces this testimony again as if someone in his audience is thinking, well, I've done so much wrong, God won't hear me. David says, this poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. This one event in David's life led to this psalm of testimony, a testimony of ultimate faith in God. David closes this part of the pericope with one more encouragement. In verse 8, he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy, he says, are those who take refuge in God. Taste and see. That the Lord is good is simply an invitation to try out this practice of counting your blessings. Somebody thought this looked like a kindergarten worksheet. But I encourage you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Just taste, just sample it. Just try it and, and see, open your eyes and pay attention and notice what God has done. And that the Lord is good and that counting your blessings is a way to take refuge. And that doing so will lift your spirit and lift your countenance. And it's good for your body. As I close with this encouragement, the David Psalm was well before the science of psychology as we know it today. But psychology agrees with David. Hear the words of one psychological resource titled, Counting Your Blessings Can Improve Your Mental and Physical Health. From HealthOneCares.com, author was unnamed, but the writer states that gratitude is a powerful and positive emotion. States that gratitude improves our mental health reducing symptoms of depression and anxiety, focusing on the positive aspects of life and acknowledging the things you're thankful for, the writer says, can help shift your mindset away from the negativity and improve your overall mental well-being. He says gratitude enhances relationships. People generally enjoy being around those who are grateful and appreciative. He used David's words here and said he or she said, gratitude makes us happier. Gratitude is strongly associated with increased feelings of happiness and life satisfaction. Keeps, he keeps going, he or she keeps going. Expressing gratitude reduces Stress improves blood pressure and even reduces inflammation. The writer goes on to say explicitly that counting your blessings can lead to improved physical health and help you cope with challenges. Gratitude can lead to better sleep quality and a strengthened immune system. The writer says, incorporating gratitude into your daily life, such as through journaling and mindfulness exercises or simply expressing thanks to those around you, can help you experience these and other benefits associated with gratitude. It sounds like to me that we were designed by the creator to taste and see that the Lord is good and designed to benefit from doing so. As Ingrid always says, God is real smart. So as we enter this month of November, let's begin a practice of daily gratitude. 
We're living in some of the most stressful days some of us have ever seen, bombarded with news that will deplete and depress us. Be intentional in the days to come and do something good for yourself, for your body, and for your mental health and count your blessings, A to Z. Start with your day with gratitude, or as David says, magnify the Lord. Let's exalt his name together. Shine a light on those things that God has been doing. David and psychologists say happy are those, healthy are those who take refuge in gratitude the things that God has done. Do something good for yourself and those around you and magnify the blessings that God has blessed in your life. It will do your body and your relationships some good. Oh.